Molly Ma is like icon in music, dope mentor, dope person. If you don't know who Molly Ma is, I was just going to lay down the hip hop history for you. But I think what kids need to start doing is doing research. We have all this technology. Google Molly Ma, a mentor rapper named Pablo. And I told Pablo before I mentor you, because um, his dad is a really good friend of mine and he asked me to do it as a favor. I said, I have some records you need to listen to. And I made him do homework, even before I would mentor him, even before we go in the studio, a talk hip hop, you know? Um, Cause if you don't know the history, then it's not a conversation. So I made him get Outkast, Equimini. I made him get Souls of Mischief, 93 to Infinity. I made him get Tribe, uh, Midnight Marauders. If I ask a young rapper who Run DMC is, he doesn't know. But then if I ask him who Elvis is, you know who Elvis is. So again, it's not a problem with the history, it's a problem with the one. We have now made hip hop too easy and too accessible to everybody. Back in the day, you, you, had, to, you had to have props to move up in the ranks. And I believe that people should have access to whatever they want to do, but there should be a crucible in everything that you do in life in order for you to continue to respect the lineage of it. So I'm in the group Crooked. I, I was, I, I'm, I'm part of the group Crooked Letters. So I actually had an opportunity to cut a record at Marley Mall's house. And I mean, he has like the real tapes of some of the most legendary hip hop songs. During that time, that's when he had that, uh, his first album. You remember he was sitting in front, of, I think it was a BMW, it was an ill ass BMW, right? So we went to his house. And I know he set this shit up, bro. I know he turned the lights on. He probably had a smoke machine in my mind. So when we were sitting there waiting on him, it was real dark outside. You know, the carport, he hit the button and he was literally standing there like this in front of that car. And it was coming up and I think it was smoke. In my mind, it was smoke and light coming up. I was like, this motherfucker is dope. And then I saw the car and I was so broke during that time. So I was really in the cars and shit. I was like, this motherfucker was fly. And he was literally sitting there right there. And he didn't move into the car, uh, uh, into the, uh, the garage raised all the way up. And I think it was some women in the background going, or maybe that was in my imagination. But it was the dopest shit in the world, man. And I remember going into that booth and the record never was released. But I remember going into that booth and spitting life and feeling like I had to prove to one of these New York greats that motherfuckers are spitting in Mississippi. And me and Kamikaze, me and Brad Franklin went in that booth and we saw like old LL records that was never released and all of this stuff. And I was like, yo, like this is history. And uh, it was just dope, man. Shout out to Molly Mar. It's something different, you know what I mean, from what we used to seeing in the South. You know, they made Atlanta proud. They made the South proud. They wasn't following the trend. If I could talk to the young Ron Artest, I would tell him to stay out of the, the projects where you're not supposed to be at doing, you know, stuff that you're not supposed to be doing. I probably put my first verse in there, that's all. And like, he brought everybody who was in the studio in there to listen to it after I was done. Tyler, the creator, uh, Jeremiah. And I don't even think that he talked on anybody else's record besides mine's. So I had made sure that I got yams on the song. It was going to either be yams or Puff Daddy, and I got yams on there. 